Welcome to the training video for text type via the keyboard. First go into Macro Express and let's make a new macro. Right click on the white area and click New Macro. Our first choice when creating a new macro is the default activation. Let's go ahead and select No Activation for this example and go to Screen Editor. Next over in our left hand window pane commands you'll see the text option uh, located towards the bottom. You need to single click on this to expand the list and double click on text type. So what's the point of text type anyway? Well text type allows you to tell the computer to type in something as you were typing it on, on the keyboard. So for example if you wanted to say help I am right here every time this macro runs it's going to display that or type it in to whichever application you might have open. Now if you don't have any applications open then it will just try to type it in to Windows which it won't understand so you'll probably get a, a few beeps back from your computer. So let's go over a couple of keys here. The alternate key, first off, if you click it and you press Alt and say A it will simply press Alt and then the letter A. It will hold the key down for that one key. So like, let's say if I type in Alt B A B C it's going to say, okay, I'm going to hold Alt down, and then I'm going to press A while I'm holding Alt down. B, C won't be affected by that Alt. So in other words, if we wanted B and C also to be affected by the Alt, using this method, we would also have to add an Alt to each one of those letters. So now it says, okay, Alt A, Alt B, Alt C, every time it runs uh, this keystroke. Well... Fortunately, there is an easier way to do it. Let's go ahead and get rid of everything that's typed right here. And uh, they've created the methods alt down and alt up for us to use. And the reason why you would want to use these is if you had multiple keys that you needed to press or hold the alternate key down for, as we had alt A, alt B, alt C. Instead, we would press alt down and then press A, B, C, and then use an alt up tag to end this first alternate down tag. So anything inside that alternate will be affected. And then if I specified IHK outside of that part of the keystroke, outside of this part of the keystroke, this section would not be affected, that IHK would not be affected. Now to start out fresh again, and so that uh, we don't get confused here, let's go ahead and delete everything that's listed in our keystroke. The next commands are arrow down, arrow left, arrow right, arrow up. These are pretty self-explanatory. They will simply type in for each one that you list in your macro. Say if I have, click on arrow down twice, it will press the arrow down button on my keyboard twice. Next we have uh, backspace, which will press the backspace key on the keyboard. Control, control down and control up, which works similar to the alternate key. However, they are using the control key. The delete key and the backspace key are similar, but the delete key will delete a character after, uh, say, my word. So let's say I have uh, how do you, and uh, it's all linked together. Well, the backspace key, if my cursor is uh, blinking right at the end here, if I press backspace, it will delete the U. Whereas if I'm centered between how and do, and I press the delete key, it will delete the D, which is in front of the blinking cursor. And again, most people will probably know that. Uh, I just want to make sure that I verify the difference between the two keys, as sometimes people don't use the delete key as they don't know how it functions. Uh, the end key will skip to the end of the line, and the reason why you might have or use this key would be because if you wanted to say have a line of text and you wanted the macro to skip to the end of the line type something in and then press the home button to go back to the beginning of the line and type something else in you can accomplish this with this key and the home key so an example of this if i go to my very beginning of my keystroke and i press the end button you'll notice that now my cursor blinks at the end whereas if i press the home button it will go to the very beginning Next is the enter button, and this will just press the enter button on your keyboard. Escape will press the escape key. Home we already talked about, and insert 
Well, I'll just have to give you an example of the insert key, because it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, let's go ahead and go under Start, Programs, Accessories, WordPad. Okay, let's go ahead and type in a text string, say, who is this? Question mark. So let's say I type in who is this person. I press space and type in person. Well, that's usually what the computer will do. However, if the insert button is toggled off, it will do something quite different. Okay, so if we click back here and right before is, we click the insert button on our keyboard uh, and start typing in who is my friend here, question mark. You'll notice that it changed the formatting of the entire uh, line because it deletes the characters after each character that I type in automatically without the insert button toggled. Okay, let's go ahead and close WordPad out. I'm going to click No to save my changes. The Num Enter will allow you to type in numbers. The page down will go down a page or page up will go up a page if this was a document, uh, say in Word or uh, Notepad. The Shift key will press the Shift button once, similar to the Alt key or the Control key. The Shift down is similar to the Alt down or uh, Control down key. does the same similarity. Uh, it just means that it's going to hold down the Shift button instead of the Control button or the Alt button. And the shift up, of course, works the same as the control up or alt up, with the difference of the shift button being pressed. There are two different methods to using the space button. Either we can just type in like uh, something to the extent of how space r space u, and that will automatically enter a space in there. Or if we press space down here, it will do the exact same thing as pressing space on the keyboard. And the rest of the keys, tab, win, win down, win up. Then we go into our function category, F1 through F12, in case we want to press those buttons on our keyboard. The next option we have is for variables. This allows us to type in a variable that we've uh, set in our macro script prior. So if we want to type in, say, T1 or N1 or D1, we select which one we want and click the insert button. Our next option is the miscellaneous keys, which allows us to type in such things as the left window, the right window, uh, which is the start button, and several more function keys. The last uh, few here, ATTN and all the way down to PA1, is for the terminal system, which is the 3270 terminal. So you probably won't be using these keys uh, unless you have one of those such terminals. The key, the keypad 0 uh, through 9 and also um, decimal, divide, times, minus, positive, those will activate the keys on the right-hand side where your number keypad is. Next option is the print screen which will print a copy of what's currently displayed on your screen by pressing this button. The scroll lock, uh, the pause button, caps lock, num lock, uh, right control, and left control, which is referring to the right and left um, buttons on your keyboard that say control. And the reason why they add left and right instead of just saying control is because some applications require you to press the left or the right control button in order to perform an action in that application. So after we select a certain button to press on the keyboard, say if we use uh, keypad 8, we need to press the insert button so that Macro Express knows to insert that in the keystrokes. Our next choice is the symbols, and this allows us to choose a specific symbol that we'd like to put in. The other thing that we can also do is an alt key sequence, which allows us to type in an, a sequence, which is from DOS, uh, 001 through 255, using the Isaac 2 character system. If you want to know more about the alt key sequence, please refer back to the book. Let me go ahead and press cancel here, and go back to our symbol window. Let's say I want to put a TM 
uh, button in there, I would simply select that and press OK. And now you'll notice that it typed in that symbol. Last but not least is how we want to display this text that we've listed in the keystroke. The type text normally will type in exactly what we have listed up here. The major benefits to using type text normally is because you can use keys such as alternate, uh, control, any keys down here that require that it be typed into the keyboard can be done using the type text normally. The major disadvantage to this is if you've got a whole bunch of information, say eight lines by uh, 20, 20 characters or 40 characters each, it will take quite a while to type that in and you might want to use the use clipboard to paste text command. So what's so beneficial about the use clipboard to paste text? Well, let's say we have a line with 60 characters and we have eight of those lines. Well, that means there's 480 characters that we have to wait for Macro Express to type in. And if that's just regular text, there's no reason why we can't use this clipboard command just to simply paste the text in so that the macro can continue. Now, keep in mind the one major disadvantage of using the clipboard to paste text is you cannot use command keys such as Alt or uh, arrow down or control because it's pasting that text in. It's not going to type in any characters from your keyboard. And also when I say type in, I mean that not as it actually physically typing on your keyboard, but the computer interprets the macro as typing it in like you would on a keyboard. The last option is the send text to control. I'm not going to cover this in this video, however, if you need more information on this, please reference back to the book. And this concludes our text type video for Macro Express.